network network security and in the network security as well there are going to be the different different of your uh, i would say different of your responsibilities there is going to be the responsibility which is going to lie with your cloud service provider and what is our responsibility right so in our responsibility things are pretty much simple i would say right because you don't have to handle those virtualization software defined network that is happening in the back end right so simply when we starting with the your concept of the network security there is going to be the two things one is going to be the your segmentation and then there is going to be the your isolation so simply when we are talking about the you know starting this discussion of the segmentation and isolation so segmentation is going to represent the separation of network traffic so for prioritizing the performance and you know possibly you know, possibly adding some protective measure like uh, if you remember we were having the subnets and on the different subnets we were launching the different different you know virtual machines so from one virtual machine we were trying to access the another one and those kind of a thing so later on uh, you know you'll be seeing as i was telling you on that day that network security group is attached to the network interface you will see that it could be attached to your particular subnet as well so that's why we were saying that you know we are prioritizing performances and possibly add some protective measure and it is more about the traffic shaping and engineering you know where we were talk we, if we talk about the isolation uh, where isolation is connected with the secrecy confidentiality integrity of the traffic flow right so you know one of the, uh, okay uh, i know pretty much easily that you will be familiar virtual lands right so we use those vlans to establish the segmentation uh, uh, engineering the segmentation and network to confirm the specific workload requirement what is required or not so those are going to be the few things that is kind of required so if we have to put one word for the board it will be more for the performance major and this is more on the your integrity measures so you will be seeing with the isolation you know we have the different option to perform segmenting is simply you know we put the segmentation in there then to protect the confidentiality integrity and availability we'll be playing with the things like the your uh, uh, your security groups then there will be the you know, firewalls vpn some intermediary of your you know security solution like we have the NAT gateway, transit gateways, okay, those kind of a thing, uh, or you put the bastion servers in between. So these kind of a things are going to be in between, which will be helping us over there. So if we are talking about, you know, this is general terms in the your this whole network. Then if we are talking about the what is this cloud service provider's responsibility, right? Uh, what cloud service provider is responsible for? So it will be, you know, responsible for services provided by the and manage the underlying security it means that physical layer, the networking, that how things should be happening, that your particular user will, uh, cloud service provider will be, you know, kind of what it will be doing, responsible for those kind of a things, right? So you have to, you know, that fabric of connectivity, network connectivity it to abstract it and to deliver it that is going to be the part that what your cloud service provider will be mostly looking forward to now when we are talking about the you know uh, the different we are just trying to differentiate between the cloud service provider responsibility and those who are the cloud consumer so from the standpoint view of your cloud service provider they need to ensure the isolation in the compute and memory environment in one virtual machine container not being visible to the another machine or container right so if there is one machine it should not be visible to the another one right so you know simply in terms of the tenants as well if i am here right a simple concept of the public cloud service provider that if i am sitting here 
and if i am trying to make a connection let's say that you and me two different tenants we created what uh, you know two vms and let's say that they are hosted on the same physical server now what is going to be in there is you were going ahead and you know you were trying to access your machine on let's say 10.1.0.4 and i was also having machine on same so this should not be the case that i am calling for that and it's you no know, you are just getting connected to my virtual machine so that isolation should be provided over there so your cloud service provider in simple terms will be managing the underlying security underlying security right then apart from this what else would be the task for the cloud service provider it will be including patches for hypervisor if you will be talking about the vulnerabilities in the cloud or virtualization or virtualized environment one of the thing is that due to the unpatch underlying hypervisors there are incidents when someone was doing the condition that i was talking about you know the jumping from the one tenant to another find the vulnerability in there where you are running and able to switch from the one vm or one environment to the another environment directly right so means you know using the patched what you have to do you mean you need to have the patch and up to date hypervisor that are properly configured and supported with the you know, supported with the processes which can keep them up to date and secure over the time because inability to patch hypervisor across the cloud deployment could create a fundamentally insecure cloud what a new sometimes there are what we have zero day vulnerabilities in the technologies right in the web application even in the network design hardware so someone can go ahead and take the advantage of those kind of things now in addition to all this thing the cloud service provider should assure customer that volatile memory is safe from any unapproved monitoring since important data could be you know uh, exposed if any other tenant or a malicious employee or even any attacker is able to access the running memory right and if you will see this is one of the thing why forensic is kind of very tough to perform in the you know your cloud service provider because you don't have the access so when we are talking about this controls access to your volatile memory right this is the one another thing that will be happening over there so these few things are the you know cloud service providers responsibility now what will be the we are we are what we are the cloud consumer so what is going to be the cloud consumer's responsibility in the cloud so cloud consumer's responsibility will be simply like you know going ahead and okay so cloud service, cloud consumers you know if i have to decide it what cloud consumer is going to do so cloud consumer is going to be responsible for your vpc virtual private cloud which you can think as the you know your own okay to define the vpc because there are different different people people defining vpc in the different terminologies so there are different component of the vpc like you know you should be able to provide it a particular virtual ip address or uh, uh, sorry private ip address public ip address it should be accessible you should be able to maintain it so you know what is a virtual private cloud when you got it is similar to your infrastructure as a service like most of the your a cloud service provider they give you the vps capability vps is rather than have you know a specific service it is a capability kind of a thing so you will be having virtual private cloud you know then you will be having establishing and configuring the security group this will be our responsibility and we will be having something like you know uh, using the bastion host or you might be wanting the you know we can call them the transit gateway like what is the you know your jump server kind of a thing or you can say the you know your uh, net gateways you will be defining these kind of a thing 
to control the traffic that how the traffic should be controlled over there so this is the cloud you know provider you know uh, your cloud consumers responsibility in the network so these are the few simpler things that cloud consumer have to do and a uh, few things you have already seen like dealing with the vpc creating the virtual network creating the you know assigning the ip addresses to it playing around with the security group so bit few more things we will be seeing there then we'll be seeing like things like the your this what are these yeah, bastion host transit gateway network these are the intermediary services yes mostly you will be controlling like that but in the past as well sometime you have the capability of uh, you know applying the security to the network kind of a thing but that is okay. very limited like you know okay. you can define only this network can access my pass in the software as a service uh, we don't have any control right so yes usually you know what we will be doing these things you could be controlling with the help of the you know mostly most of the control will be with the that's why vpc is there because you can give or assign them if you will be talking about these things when we are talking about the vpc they are not the you know private cloud so vpc is usually implemented in the your uh, you know public cloud and they represent the very basic offering from the cloud service provider so if i'm talking about the you know uh, because why we are talking because you bring that point on the ies so yes it is true that most of these things will be controllable from the your infrastructure server so what is like vpc elements so there are different elements to the your vpc one of them is like you know ip address assignment and the management so there are very specific things so when we are talking about the element and the capability of the virtual private cloud it is going to be including defining and managing the private in you know uh, managing private and the public ip addresses what it will do it will allow any virtual machine that you have deployed to go ahead and communicate across the subnet and also it can connect the this separate cloud even the vpc because you have the private and public both type of ip addresses so you can go ahead and you can even connect onto the your traditional data center to the you know cloud environment means those hybrid connection that what we are having so i'll be showing you this one example with the vpn today that you know with the help of because vpc have that kind of a feature you can you know use it as a tra traffic optimizer you can apply load balancer application firewall in there so this will be something that will be the part of these whole thing so what it is doing it is not only doing this thing it will be also managing the we are talking about this manage vm communication as well that you know vpc element so in the aws if you have worked with it vnet which we were creating it is very specifically called the vpc right so what it is capable to do like i was talking manage the you know vm communication it can go ahead and it can connect the this separate cloud your on prem right these kind of uh, you know your different different kind of the your different technology together as well so how it is possible with the different help of the bit of the different different services and then there is going to be the your i was talking about your aviatrix services right that is the third party tool which i was saying that kind of a broker so what they do because what you have to do you have to carefully plan these things when you are doing in the multi cloud so as i was saying the ip addresses bandwidth gateway they should be closely monitored so what you will be doing these kind of a thing why you are able to connect because your vpc has ability to go with the private ip address like this it has ability to have some of the you know, public ip addresses as well and using those public ip addresses you can communicate with each other you know with that you can establish vpns jump servers with each other and then through that whole thing you can go ahead and communicate with each other on the privately you know private kind of a network so how it will be working uh, towards the end today we will be try to see these things right
so usually the motive today is this video you know, understanding the functionality and the security perspective in the your you know uh, networking part that what are the networking security operation that you will be getting over here so we have these particular kind of a scenario as well so you will be having different public private ip address range you will be having the option of load balancing in there you will be having the option of you know uh, going with the application application firewall application balancer so load balancer if i'm talking because you know i know everyone by now will be familiar that i am more of a you know microsoft certified trainer so i work mostly with their youth product so in there what we generally do is we have the option of load balancing and load balancing also in the different different level so load balancing i can do in the layer number four or i can perform that on the your your layer number seven as well so there are different things like there are the load balancer there is the application gateway which can help you to you know do the load balance and application layer and for the traffic management we have something like the azure front door service which will be you know help you to on the global level this is a regional resource app gateway is something like which will be regional this is on the global level based on the latency of your user allow the traffic to be directed to this vnet then to this vnet right something like that and with these things the benefit of these things are that these things also support your web application firewall so you can deploy a web application firewall as well to protect your network so there are these different the your cdn and uh, content delivery network and there is uh, your microsoft's own cdn as service as well that is the you know kind of a big brother or you know, which is goes with the name of the traffic manager okay so it can control whole thing you know even your front door services as well so you know it can have the things like the fully call you know you can have a fully qualified domain name and you can host multiple site you know uh, multiple site traffic you can host over there so all those different features but yes to be exactly put in that way it will be more like a cdn right that front door service so you will if you know and that is something then when you will be deep diving into the any one of those things because right now we are talking about in the general terms here that what should be allowed right as a cloud security provider responsibility our responsibility and few of the implementation we will be seeing from our end that what is actually happening over there